Hola clase, ¿cómo están ustedes? Uh, primero quiero decir lo siento por no poder subir este video antes de la medianoche, la noche del 22 de febrero. Um, yo estaba exhausto por um, intentar ayudar a mi hijo que tenía infección del oído, uh, pero se está mejorando, recuperando y en este video yo quiero recuperar lo que hubiéramos hecho en clase um, el 22. Y tal vez darles una prevista de lo que vamos, espero, lo que vamos a hacer en clase el 24 jueves, el 24 de febrero. So, all that in English really quickly. So, I want to apologize for not being able to uh, load this before midnight uh, on the 22nd. I was exhausted from trying to help my son with his earache. Uh, his, he had an infection in his ear. So, we spent a lot of time at the doctor's office. And I uh, want to, uh, he's recovering and everything, so that's, that's good. And I uh, want to recover the time we lost for class uh, on the 22nd and, tell, and, and maybe give you a preview of what we're going to uh, do on, uh, for class on the 24th, I hope. If, si nos permite el tiempo, right? If the weather allows us to. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And you already know by looking at the timestamp, whether this is a long video or not, or that succeeded in making it a short abbreviated video, uh, because most of the time is you actually doing the activities, right? Uh, not listening to me blab, unless you're just gleaning some Espanol, right? So, aquí estamos en Unidad 2 España. And just, I want to go through the, all the items. I don't think I really highlighted them or presented them. One by one, I want us to know what they are. Apuntes de la unidad dos. Aquí tenemos los apuntes, claro. Aquí estu estuvimos el 22. Estamos en el 23. I'm making this on the 23rd. Y vamos a estar en el 24. Um, so we're kind of rounding this out. Um, I don't like to rush through the España unidad, although it's kind of commonplace now because February is just a crazy weather month. But we'll try to get in as much as we can. So there are the apuntes. We'll go back to them in a moment. Uh, repaso del imperfecto. This is an assignment I'd like for us to try. I won't, I won't uh, take any points away from it, but we'll do this in class and it'll make it a lot quicker if we can go ahead and try to do it at home. Uh, you can fill in the blank, make it a Google Doc if you want. Um, I would really like to give you a preview of what el ingenioso Hidalgo Don, Don Quijote de la Mancha I say that 10 times fast, El Ingenioso Hidalgo, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Uh, the most famous book after the Bible, yeah, until Harry Potter came along. So I think it's number three right now. Pero es una historia increíble. It may not seem as incredible now, but it was the first of its kind. It's kind of like, wow, that's incredible. You can fly in the air. <laughs> so at some point, the airplane was incredible because it was the first, you know, and... Uh, this was the first Western novel, yeah. Uh, so we have Discusión, La Identidad Española. This is based on what you saw in the Libro de Texto. So you have to read that section called Aperturas and then watch the videos. What um, prejuicios, uh, what uh, stereotypes, estereotipos tienes en la mente sobre España? What stereotypes do you have in your mind about España? Um, it's okay to have stereotypes. I have stereotypes about Colombia <laughs> from what I heard as a child. And, uh, you know, sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire. So there's some truth a lot of times in estereotipos, unless they're just so outlandish. Like it's just, they're just nonsensical. Uh, but what you've heard about España, there's actually some of that. Flamenco, baile flamenco. And that's a great, wonderful thing. People love it. Not everyone in, in España. Um, Los toros. Bulls, bullfighting. People actually do not like that in España. They think it's inhumane or it's it's cruelty toward animals. They're not humans, but yeah, Peter would not appreciate that, and I I really don't either. I went to a couple um, to fulfill my stereotypes, I guess. And yeah, by the way, the running of the bulls. The bulls are trotting. They should call it the trot, the trotar de los coros, de los toros, <laughs> the trotting. They just happen to have four legs. It looks like they're going really fast. The people who are running solo tienen dos piernas y tienen que correr rápidamente to keep pace with the bulls who have four legs. 
So they're running. And if a bull, you know, sticks you with this cuerno, with his horn, um, running at, you know, two miles per hour, uh, it's going to hurt. <laughs> so they're running really fast. Anyway, a little bit about estereotipos. Um, you don't want to read the questions first and then answer your colleague. You can see I changed the date there to viernes. So you can have some more time with that, just in case we don't get to meet el jueves, el 24. Uh, Lectura 2 y Escritura 2 sobre el Loco de Sevilla. This is written by the same guy who wrote Ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quijote de la Mancha. Um, it's always about someone who's a uh, loco, <laughs> or someone who has uh, a quien se le ha secado el cerebro, to whom their brain has dried up. That indicates uh, locura, craziness, insanity in the person. And there's always a lot of humor although very subtle. And then Prueba del Modulo 2 sobre España. We'll talk about that more. Hopefully we're back in class before the first. Um, if not, I'll move this back a day or two, yeah. Okay, so I wanna go back to Apuntes de la Unidad 2. And uh, aquí estamos, um, I'm gonna go to El 22 because that's where we were going to be. And there are some, people that I'd like for you to meet. This is my cousin, just kidding. So some voces that we'd like to listen to, Angel del Noroeste de España, the Northwest of Spain, that'll be this region here, and Maria del Sur de España. So the regions in España, and people have different ways of speaking, just like we do in Los Estados Unidos. Aunque sea un país pequeño, hay regiones donde tienen ciertos dialectos y formas de hablar. Although it's a small country, the regions of the certain dialects and ways of talking. So just to go according to what you see here, we uh, hopefully will, I have the date wrong here, but it works out for today. Uh, hablar de las regiones autónomas de España y los primeros habitantes del país, which were the visigodos, one of the first inhabitants of the country. Uh, and during this time, a lot of German was going on in the country. Yeah, uh, there's been a lot of uh, influencia árabe, a lot of Arabic influence. Um, de los judíos, a lot of Jewish influence. Uh, who wouldn't want to occupy this wonderful peninsula, right? Uh, es, vamos a también hablar de la gramática. I want to point you to it. I won't make you sit through this entire uh, or do a long video uh it's reviewed of course so that's that's a good thing of course we have an assignment not for great but something i'd like you to do just to see how we are understanding and remembering el preterito versus el imperfecto también quiero que conozcan a angel y a maria unas voces y perspectivas españolas so uh, of course you can go to your libro de texto and i'm going to put there now hopefully it'll take me to the correct place. And so we are here, España. And of course, as I was saying, you want to go to Aperturas to prepare to do the uh, discusión. Uh, check your understanding by doing these uh, preguntas. There are a few there. And you'll have to, you know, read a little bit. But try to do as much as you can. It's a good way to check your understanding. Of course, the discussion is about estereotipos, uh, como vemos a España, aquí en los Estados Unidos, the image of Spain in the eyes of an American, right? Okay, voces, aquí es donde tenemos a Ángel y María, y a otras personas también, que tienen ciertas formas de hablar. Almaná, que siempre tiene um, información um, muy... Uh, Muy interesante, yo digo. It always has some really inf interesting information. Uh, so you can see what the perspective is of that people, uh, that people have for today concerning, like, for example, uh, bulls and the treatment of bulls and um, el matrimonio del mismo sexo, uh, LGBTQ issues and concerns, el flamenco, que es música y baile folclorico de España. 
Um, Catalonia, this is where Barcelona is in the Northeast. What's going on there? Why is it always in the news? Yeah, so some interesting things. Try to read a little bit of it. You can, you know, glean some of it and you may surprise yourself uh, on how much you can actually understand. There's no penalty, right? Uh, here in Sucesos, we often have a lot of history. Um, here, this one is talking about the Invasión Musulmana y Reconquista, the uh, Muslim invasion and the reconquest. This is an important part of history in España. This is called the Mesquita, it's a mosque, which was actually converted to a synagogue. And then Una Iglesia, it's just a museum today. Uh, I believe it's not being used any, for anything, at least not, not uh, since I was there in 2011. So maybe they've changed, but wonderful uh, source of history. And La Guerra Civil was in España, not in our lifetime, but fairly close. It was in the, well, I was gonna say the century in which uh, we were born, but I forget. <laughs> you were just barely born in this century. Uh, I think all of us, uh, all of you, not all of us, but all of you, um, maybe some of you were born in 99 or something, I'm not sure, but uh, 98, 97. But um, yeah, La Guerra Civil was fairly recent. I mean, it was less than 100 years ago. The Civil War in the United States, I mean, it was not quite 200 years ago, but yeah, we're getting close. But theirs was fairly recent and they had some interesting uh, results from that. Mainly el franquismo y una transición hacia la democracia. So this takes you to the history of España. It's very interesting. And I'm just so saddened that we don't have time to do this in class. Un paso más habla de la literatura, algo de arte en España. It talks about literature, art in España, and of course, el Quijote. So that long title that I read to you, El Ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quijote de la Mancha, I said it really fast and mumbled it because people say it so often that it's just, let's get through the title. And they just call it El Quijote <laughs> because it's just a, song, a long title. Uh, la obra más universal e influyente de la literatura española. The most universal and influence work of Spanish literature not just of Spanish literature, but of literatura in general, yeah? The novel was born there. Perspectivas, um, más consideraciones de uh, la sociedad en España, or whatever country we're, we're covering. Uh, inmigración en España, this is something, this is a thing, yeah? De donde vienen las personas que inmigran a España. Uh, es un país de emigrantes, yeah? And, España rural. Do you have this view of España? How do you see it? Do you see it as a rural, just a rural country? There's actually some huge cities. Uh, Madrid is the closest thing I've been to uh, as far as like New York. I have never been to New York City. I've been to Dallas, Houston, to Los Angeles. That was in the 80s though. <laughs> um, Detroit, Kansas City. Uh, I've never been to the, the largest cities um, in the United States. And the LA thing didn't count because I was like six years old. Madrid is a huge city. It's the metropolitan area. And España, Barcelona also, and there's a couple more. Okay, so, Gramatica, you have that here. You want to go to, of course, um, Unidad Dos, El Imperfecto, El Preterito. When you click on it, it has uh, a lot of review, oftentimes there is a person talking uh, to review and there are estudiantes just like you, just like yourself. Um, and you may have to click on one of these to, to find it. Uh, el Preterito y el Perfecto are not only the, the only two things that you will find for review in this unit. You also find verbos como gustar. And these are good reviews. I would just peruse through them and uh, see how much you remember, yeah. So I want to move on from here and go on to, you hear a voice over from me in a minute, but um, this is Angel. Listen to Angel and follow along with the transcriptos, the transcripts. Same thing with Maria del Mar, Cuadron, Rodan, and follow transcripts and see how well you can follow along with what she's saying. That is an accomplishment within itself, right? You can follow the bouncing ball. That means you at least are familiar with the language, right? 
And of course, our discussion tienes una nueva opinión de España, de España después de ver los videos. ¿Cuáles imágenes esperabas ver y cuáles no? ¿Cuáles son tres preguntas que tienes sobre España, los videos o el español de España que tienes después de ver los videos? So I'd love to see, hear your perspective. I don't think they'll be the same <clears throat> because some of us grew up speaking more Espanol than others, hearing more Espanol than others, maybe from familia, maybe just por la televisión, maybe in school with a person who had Hispanic heritage. That's much more common for you all in your 20s than for me in my 40s. There were, you know, people, but let's say there were like, uh, in my classes, maybe there were 7% of the people who were Spanish speaking, but probably in your classes, you probably have upwards of 40%. You know, it's not uncommon. Uh, so your perspectives might be different and that's fine. El Loco de Sevilla, um, just really a funny story. So you'll have to read it and I'll help you through it because it's Espanol Antiguo. And I really don't know anyone who reads old Spanish unless they are Spanish majors. And uh, you don't find a lot of people say, hey, let's read some old Spanish. But it's a really funny uh, story. And uh, really quickly, here is El Ingenioso Hidalgo, Hidalgo, Don Quijote de la Mancha. Um, this is an example of some old Spanish. Era se una vez en un lugar de la Mancha, un Hidalgo alto y flaco al que le gustaba disfrazarse, o disfrazarse con una armadura, armadura abollada de su bisabuelo, una lanza y un escudo, pues se creía un caballo andante y se paseaba por los alrededores de sus tierras, montando en un viejísimo caballo que compró a un potro en tiempos de abundancia. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my, my uh, castellano is a little bit rusty there, but um, that's one sentence. <laughs> so, once upon a time, sentences were just endless, but people had more time to read back right then also. So this wasn't such a big deal. All that in English. So once upon a time, in a place called La Mancha, a, um, a kind of gentleman, uh, horseman, uh, tall and skinny, uh, who enjoyed dressing up with uh, his great grandfather's dented and battered armor, a um, lanza, I forget the word for a spear, and or shield and, and uh, sword and shield, who believed himself to be a, uh, a knight. Un caballero, un caballero andante, so he was a knight, K-N-I-G-H-T. And he would go through the outskirts of uh, certain lands and regions uh, on this really old horse that he bought when the horse was really very young uh, in more, in more uh, richer times or abundant times, right? Uh, so all of that, I know that was a weird long sentence, but it just gives you the setup. And this guy's crazy. He's, he would love to read, Amaba tanto leer y vivía de vivía tan de verdad lo que leía que se pasaba por uh, las noches de aventura en aventura de pelea en pelea y se levantaba por el día con la boca seca de insultar a sus enemigos. Um, so he would read so much, he would go on these adventures at night, he would wake up with like a dry mouth from insulting all of these people. He would get in fights, right? Just pick fights. I mean, he wasn't this like intimidating figure, but he would pick fights because he was a knight. He was, so I have to defend this person. Así que del mucho leer y del poco dormir se le secó el cerebro. Wait a minute. From lots of reading and little sleep, his brain dried up. <laughs> oh no, maybe we should get more sleep. Certainly I should. I'll stop there. Anyway, so this was a novel thing in the early 1500s, right? Not so much today. But if you read the story, you can see a ton of 20th century literature in El Quixote. And that's one of the fascinating things about it. It was such a forward thinking work of art. So hopefully this has been educational for you. You do have time on the discussion. And if you have preguntas, 
preocupaciones, claro, me pueden mandar un email y espero verles en clase jueves el 24. Cuídense y hasta luego.